Chef Pennington here. Today is top secret dry rub Texas style. We're going to do two different dry rubs here. We're going to do a base, and then we're going to do one that's good for like chicken and pork. All right? So that's going to be cool. It's going to be really one ingredient difference. The link below will have more information about the actual measurements here and how to use them and manipulate them a little bit, you could say. So we're starting off with the best chili powder you can get in the United States, which is New Mexico chili powder. This is not the stuff you get at the grocery store, unfortunately. I will have links below for all these ingredients so you guys can source them and everything will be nice and easy for you guys. So we're using the New Mexico as our base. And then we're going to come back to Texas, which is where I'm from, and we're going to use a special one. We're going to use a San Antonio chili powder that's dark, which means they just roasted them longer and developed the flavors more. Something like a dry rub, we're into big flavor, balancing flavor, and those little nuances, little things that make you go, hmm, what's different? Well, this is one of the ingredients that makes it really different, in my opinion. Okay, we're going to use another San Antonio. We're just going to use more of a general, beautiful, as you can see in the color, chili powder. So good barbecue dry rubs. It's about the chili powder, guys. You know, that might be one of the things you've done such a great job in the past. You're like, eh, something's always missing. Well... That's one of them. But we're going to talk about other missing ingredients and how some other amazing stuff here. This is a cool ingredient, guys. This puts texture into it. After your ribs cook on the barbecue pit and like this barbecue dry rub kind of cooks down, it almost seems like it's a little bit saucy without adding sauce. And there's that little extra texture left over, and that is a secret ingredient for that. All right, guys. This ingredient can be really spicy, amazingly spicy if you've never tasted it before. It's kind of like wasabi powder. I like it, but this is a base type dry rub recipe so try not to overdo the flavors meaning that you can go back later and add a little bit more it's a delicious garlic powder you can't do barbecue dry rub without two ingredients obviously we talked about the chili powder but particularly onion powder and garlic powder i mean that's as like classy as it ever came but using really high quality ones is the key guys penzi's right there is a company that is just the best spice company in America. I mean, I'm sure there's other ones that are really great, but they're the ones that I've been exposed to. They're just, everything's like the most amazing smelling, tasting you've ever experienced. And I'm not getting told, I'm not getting paid to say that. I mean that. Herbsy Provence, amazing. I'll write about it in the article below. You guys can learn a little bit more about what's in it, but it's amazing. It's Italian herbs, essentially. All spice, think like Caribbean. It's strong, really loud, but dry rubs, every one of these ingredients are strong. So you might want to start using just a little bit, and maybe on your chicken or pork, particularly chicken, you might add a little bit more of the allspice. Cumin, guys, this is the big secret ingredient. I would suggest starting, like I said, a little bit on, um, you don't want to put a lot, like the allspice. You want chili, you're going to use a lot more. It's just a really personal ingredient, guys. You can toast those seeds and then grind them up yourself. There's a couple of different ways to handle the cumin. I can't tell you exactly what to do with cumin because it's, it really depends on what you guys are cooking and what you want the end result to be. But I'll say it again. If you're doing like chilies, you add a lot more. That is the secret ingredient in chili, in my opinion. Cool ingredient, guys. Chihuahua Mexican wood smoke salt. Chihuahua is actually a real place in Mexico. And this is the, this, oh my gosh, this ingredient is so cool. You guys could roast a chicken in your house and add a good bit of that, which is not salty. You actually want to taste it. It's so amazing. It tastes good. It doesn't taste like a big nasty bunch of salt in your mouth that you can have a chicken roasted in your house and it's it has a smoky note. So dry rubs and black pepper, salt and pepper in Texas is kind of what dry rubs are. Not not saying that people don't do like this, they add a lot of stuff, but that's kind of the, the saying, if you will. So the pepper level, real personal, add a lot or a little. Barbecue pit, I'll be grinding up some fresh pepper all by itself in like your crack pepper deal and just really go to town if you're doing some ribs on the pit. I think that's a really important ingredient, fresh black pepper. So right now everything's smelling really good. That coriander has that kind of cinnamon, I'm sorry, not cinnamon, but orange kind of essence and flavor to it. So if I was doing chicken, I'd add a little more of the coriander personally. Terminal sugar, guys, this is what makes the two recipes different, particularly is that sweet element we're bringing. We don't want sweet when we're doing beef, right? It doesn't make sense, but everywhere else almost it does. And terminal sugar has texture, kind of like our granulated um, garlic did. So... It's hard to get a lot of texture in there. Our, our, our chili flakes, they've got some texture in there. And it's really nice. Um, the sugar part, how much you add. Depends what region of the country you're in, really. Some places like a little more sweet versus others. And the terminado is the way that you get to manage that. 
Um, the salt level. I don't tell you how much salt to put in this because that is, again, a personal thing. Um, I do like using Himalayan sea salt. I'll say that. Himalayan sea salt just has a lot of healthiness to it. But this is a fantastic dry rub, guys. It has all the makings of you doing a little something here to make it your dry rub. You know, that's kind of the fun of cooking. Somebody tells you something, you're like, man, that's a really great idea. And then you do a little something else to it, which is what we're doing here today. So getting... So here, that little deal on the side, I like doing that whenever I'm going to barbecue or something like that because things get messy and we have all, made all this beautiful dry rub and I don't want to have to go back in there and keep scooping out and getting you know cross-contamination. So using a little deal on the side right there like that is a great idea and they're really cheap. I hope you guys enjoy this dry rub recipe. Make it your own. Some of the successes that you guys have, I'd love to hear about them. Totally would. Come join us on social media. We'd love to have you guys. We'll have links below for all that kind of stuff recipe card below and we'll talk about some of the ingredients and all that kind of stuff and take it to the next level if you will and you guys have the best thank you so much for signing up and being followers y'all